Imagine driving past what looks like a normal Air Force base when you spot something that makes you do a double take. Fighter jet spinning slowly, but not flying. It is hanging upside down on a massive steel tower, like a toy in a child's hands. Stick around to find interesting reasons why giant aircraft are hanging upside down. Welcome to one of America's brilliant secretive military testing programs, nicknamed the Upside Down Air Force. Established in the early 1970s at the Rome Air Development Center in New York, now known as the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL. Air Force began literally flipping multi-million dollar aircraft upside down through every imaginable angle. This program was aimed at solving critical issues that could mean life or death for pilots in combat situations. Back in the Cold War era of the 1970s at Griffiths Air Force Base, New York, the Air Force faced a nightmare. Antenna systems that worked perfectly in labs were failing catastrophically once installed on real aircraft, creating dangerous communication blackouts and radar blind spots that left pilots flying deaf and blind. You might think antennas aren't that important, but they are literally the lifelines that keep pilots connected and alive in the sky. Imagine being a pilot in a dogfight, desperately trying to call for backup. You reach for your radio and realize you can't reach your wingman. Just imagine the fear and confusion that moment can cause. Or imagine your radar warning receiver screams that a missile is locking onto you from the left, but the real threat is actually coming from the right. In aerial combat, that kind of confusion doesn't just cost missions, it costs lives. But why did this happen? On an aircraft, antennas don't operate in isolation. The fuselage, wings, weapons pylons, external fuel tanks, and countless other components interfere with antennas' radio waves, creating a complex mix of signals bouncing all around that can block, reflect, or distort critical signals in unpredictable ways. Military aircraft made this problem exponentially worse than civilian planes. Here's why. If you look at civilian airliners from the same airline, they're essentially identical. As one Air Force engineer put it, if you removed the paint, they would be indistinguishable from each other. And unlike civilian planes that are nearly identical from one to the next, military aircraft configurations change constantly, sometimes multiple times a day, based on their mission. One day, a fighter might carry fuel tanks and reconnaissance gear. The next, missiles and electronic warfare pods. Every different setup creates a unique environment for antennas, meaning what worked with fuel tanks might fail completely when missiles are attached. Understanding exactly where these vulnerabilities exist allows mission planners to design smarter flight profiles and gives pilots the situational awareness they need to stay ahead of threats that could exploit these electromagnetic weak points. But how do you test the effectiveness of aircraft antenna systems? Traditional flight testing was expensive, dangerous, and frankly inadequate. You needed pilots, fuel, perfect weather, and air traffic control coordination. Plus, if something went wrong, you might lose a multi-million dollar aircraft. And if everything goes according to plan, you could only test a few configurations per flight, and scheduling the next test might take weeks. So the traditional method could not deliver the detailed data. That's when the Upside Down Air Force came into play. Three locations were selected because of their relative isolation and favorable topography. Verona, Newport, and Stockbridge. The Air Force built massive towers, 30 to 50 feet high, capable of holding full-sized aircraft. These towers can spin, tip, and rotate the planes through every angle imaginable, including fully upside down, hence the program's nickname, the Upside Down Air Force. This method gave the United States Air Force greater control over precise aircraft positioning and allowed longer testing periods, saving countless hours and millions of dollars compared to traditional flight testing. You might be wondering why flip the planes upside down? Why not just mount them upright like they normally fly? Well, here's the catch. When aircraft are placed upright on those giant pedestals, the very stands holding them up get in the way of the antenna tests. With the antennas on the belly facing up toward the sky, engineers can spin, tilt, and rotate the plane however they want, without the pedestal blocking any signals. The stand stays safely out of the way, below the aircraft, letting them get the clearest, most accurate measurements possible. Over the decades, the Upside Down Air Force has tested a wide range of aircraft, from fighters like the F-4 Phantom, F-15, YF-16, and F-22, to heavy hitters like the B-52 Bomber and C-130 Transport. Even the cutting-edge F-35C full model was flipped upside down for testing as recently as 2014. So next time you see these giant planes hanging on massive towers, don't think they're on vacation. Remember, that's the Upside Down Air Force hard at work. If you liked this video, 
hit that subscribe button for more explanations of the world around us. Thanks for watching.